A historic moment in RPG history has just taken place, and like a short stay at a hospice, the unthinkable is suddenly staring at us right in the face. And this has resulted in a ton of scrutiny being leveled at Critical Role, and their company, Darrington Press, especially regarding their relationship with Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, as certain secrets and plans have just been revealed to the public. And some people are really not happy. It seems like the burgeoning Critical Role RPG empire might be under some stress, just as they're getting started. And the future of Critical Role and Dungeons and Dragons is being determined as I speak. Now, this all started during the OGL scandal earlier this year, because of course it did. That's basically the Lord of the Rings style opening narration to every video on this channel these days. I feel it in the water. I smell it in the air. Hey look, a dwarf! But at the time of the UGL scandal, many people in the community, myself included, speculated that Critical Role would be leaving Dungeons & Dragons forever, such as in this video. It seemed pretty inevitable at the time, considering that the changes to the UGL that Hasbro Wizards were trying to implement, and which led to the public outcry and the last alliance of men and elves in the first place, were explicitly created to target Matt Mercer. Sir. That's right, the OGL scandal was in part inspired by Hasbro Wizards' attempts to take Matt Mercer down like he was a democratically elected leader in South America. Or at least, Hasbro Wizards just wanted to get their hands in his pocket, and not in a good way. Remember, one of the contentious clauses originally proposed by WotC that spurred on the OGL scandal in the first place was the addition of a ransom clause to the open gaming license. This was a requirement that third-party companies relying on the OGL would have to pay Hasbro Wizards 20% of their income in royalty payments, but only if the third party were earning over 750,000 freedom bucks. Now that's a lot of tamales. And how many third party RPG companies were routinely earning enough freedom bucks to hit that threshold? Well, mostly one, critical role. That's right, the OGL scandal was a direct shot across the bow from Hasbro Wizards' big stonking ship against Matt Mercer. And here's the thing, everyone knew it. In 2023, RPGs became battlefields. So then in that context, it wasn't unreasonable to think that the relationship between Critical Role and Hasbro Wizards had become soured somewhat as a result. However, there was always a little bit of a twist to this relationship because D&D Beyond has historically been a commercial sponsor of the Critical Role show. And D&D Beyond is owned by, you guessed it, Robocop 6 villain Hasbro Wizards. This wasn't a problem for a while because Critical Role have historically used D&D in their actual play show. Until, you know, that boy shot I just mentioned and the whole OGL thing. This meant that many in the community assumed that Critical Role were currently bound to Hasbro Wizards and D&D Beyond because of devil contracts signed years ago. But the moment that Critical Role could do so, they would be distancing themselves from D&D Beyond the same way that I've distanced myself from my student loans. Well, look, you just change your address once, they never find you again. So it is within this context that it has now just been revealed that Critical Role and Hasbro Wizards seem to be closer than ever. Because in a historic first for Wizard of the Coast, they have broken their shadow ban on allowing third-party publisher content on D&D Beyond and opened up the door specifically for Critical Role, allowing them to sell the Taldorai campaign setting on the previously pretty closed off platform. Without a doubt, this is a massive win for Hasbro Wizards, allowing them to pull the fan base of literally trillions of Critical Role fans, aka critters, onto their closed platform of D&D Beyond with the sweet popcorn scented allure of a book that has more than a single subclass inside. Oh, I see the D&D players out there salivating already. It's been a while since you've seen that much content, right? But no doubt this new jam-packed book will have the number of users on D&D Beyond skyrocketing in no time as people seek to pick up a little piece of Critical Role in a digital format, which is probably a lot more ethical than taking a physical piece. Not for me though, <laughs> I have Orion's pinky finger. <laughs> but this 
this has come with a little bit of a complication. You see, there was a lot of people out there hoping that Hasbro Wizards would be getting a little bit of a bloody nose this year, and they are pretty disappointed in Matt Mercer and the Critical Role crew. And some of them have been expressing this disappointment through the always extremely productive Misdirected Angry Rage. But, dear viewer, judge them not too harshly, because, to be honest, this response is pretty understandable. Critical Role publishing third-party content on D&D Beyond is a huge boon to Hasbro Wizards, no matter what way you slice it. Because outside of the upcoming virtual tabletop system, the most important thing to Hasbro Wizards right now is the virtual database and online store D&D Beyond. And it's on that virtual battlefield that the future of D&D is being fought right now. Everything that happens on D&D Beyond is of supreme importance to the rest of the RPG community. And the really simple reason for this is because one of the reasons why the community were ever able to even emerge victorious during the OGL scandal over Hasbro Wizards and get them to finally walk back their draconian policy changes to the OGL was because D&D Beyond cancellations had reached such a feverish pitch that Hasbro Wizards just wanted to stop the bleeding of subscribers and cash and finally gave in. Seriously, at the height of the OGL scandal, D&D Beyond subscription cancellations actually crashed the D&D Beyond servers, and internal sources within Hasbro Wizards actually urged the community to keep cancelling subscriptions as it was the most important metric that the Hasbro money men were looking at when determining how to react. It was a really big deal at the time, like S Club 7 in the 90s. <laughs> Remember those guys? Many people don't. And some are now arguing that this new Tal Durai sourcebook from Critical Role is going to attract a ton more people to D&D Beyond and make Hasbro Wizards a lot of money. And considering that Watsi are in the middle of a scandal every other week, that's not necessarily a great look. But if I may, allow me to step out in front of the speeding train that is community outrage for a second. Because firstly, I want to say that for players of Dungeons & Dragons, this whole thing is good. To be perfectly honest, I'm surprised that Wizards of the Coast let this book on D&D Beyond at all, considering how bad it makes all their latest content look. Seriously, just compare this book to Bigsby's Presents Glory Hole of the Giants. The Tal Dorai Afterbirth book comes with five new backgrounds, seven feats, and nine, count them nine, new subclasses. Glory Hole of the Giants in comparison, which also only came out this week, it comes comes with ahem, two new backgrounds, eight feats, and a single subclass. <coughs> The gulf in content between these two books speaks for itself, and the fact of the matter is that most new folk getting into Dungeons & Dragons these days are using D&D Beyond. And if Tal Durai Afterbirth is their first experience of third-party content, then frankly, that's great. Many people still hold the mistaken belief that Hasbro Wizards create the only legitimate and good content for D&D. A single whiff of this new Critical Role book and those prejudices against third-party content will be dis Sweated. That's awesome, frankly. More people willing to buy third-party content is always great in my book. But the biggest reason that I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the famously lenient court of public opinion on behalf of Critical Role here is because this entire deal represents where Critical Role were as a company two years ago, long before the OGL scandal. See, just like the villain in Tomorrow Never Dies, I don't just report the news on this channel, I make it. Because while I was deep in research for this video, I stumbled across a Reddit post in an ancient forgotten thread from two years ago discussing how the content creator and YouTuber Nerd Immersion had found internal coding in D&D Beyond titled, you'll never believe it, Tal Dorai. This all but proves to me that this D&D Beyond slash Critical Role integration has been in the works for a long time before the OGL scandal. 
unlikely, Critical Role's hands have been tied on this matter for a really long time. And bear in mind that two years ago, D&D Beyond wasn't even owned by Wizards of the Coast. Hasbro Wizards only bought D&D Beyond in 2022, just last year. So all of this would have been negotiated not with Hasbro Wizards, but the previous D&D Beyond team. So it's kind of unfair to blame Critical Role for the sins of the new guys. Haha, <laughs> checkmate, internet. Now, it's that kind of sleuthing that people subscribe to this channel for. Unless you're not subscribed, in which case, why not do so it's free. And if you really want to help the channel, maybe check out my Patreon too. It's the only reason I'm able to comb through obscure Reddit threads in search of pornography so bizarre that it gets around YouTube censorship policies. <laughs> That's actually another great reason to subscribe to this channel. You don't want to miss a thing. But all of that said, there is one element of this story that does scare me. And it's the fact that this new Taldorai Afterbirth book is being sold under the third party tag on the D&D Beyond store implying that Hasbro Wizards may be planning on integrating more third-party stuff on D&D Beyond. And while that might be great news for those third-party creators, you know, because it'll make them Pablo Escobar money, I'm not so sure if it's great for the wider industry. D&D Beyond is ultimately a pretty walled-off garden for Dungeons & Dragons content only. And the stronger, the larger it becomes, the more anything outside of that platform may wither away. You see, much like Church instead, I've always thought that it's best to keep the stores where we purchase our RPG content as a separate thing from those who create the content. Otherwise, you just end up with a Games Workshop scenario with one massive monolithic producer owning everything and therefore being able to squeeze out the competition. And unless Hasbro Wizards are ready to start selling Pathfinder or Delta Green stuff on D&D Beyond, I'm worried about the chilling effect that a D&D Beyond one store shop may have on the rest of the RPG industry, or at least everything that isn't Dungeons and Dragons, which, hey, who knew? There's a lot of that stuff out there too. But you know what? Hey, who cares? Soon enough, the entire RPG industry is going to be all replaced by AI anyway, thanks to Hasbro Wizards, as you can see here. And if you're interested in exclusive live streams, videos, and hanging out in a secret Discord room with me and a friendly community, please check out my Patreon linked in the description of this video. I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoKev, Mistress RB Novini, and Travis Hunter. I really appreciate it, you guys. Thanks so much. I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye